I didn't know how to start studying for net. Like ev- everything was all over the place. There's so much of syllabus. There's no limit to the right. syllabus. Absolutely. So I I just didn't know what to do. But even before I started my masters for my UG, sometimes I would check out your YouTube videos for like uh, UG classes, um, and I found them interesting and uh, like the visual uh, representation that was very eye catching and easy to remember. So I used to mm-hmm. uh, check out your classes before that online YouTube classes. So then I found out that you also um, provide coaching for uh, UGC Net. So. Uh, i first saw the syllabus and the syllabus made me so happy because nowhere else could i find such a beautifully divided syllabus it is uh, concise compact but it also contains every little thing that is necessary for net mm-hmm. uh, which was nowhere else available and that too it was it was available for free which was like yeah. a jackpot so uh, i also read up on uh, some other people's experience uh, who have studied under you and i saw that uh, um, they have done great in life and i i was actually interested to see what it's like Hi, Aprati. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. You're audible. Hi. How are you? I'm great, ma'am. I'm great. I'm just Firstly, really great. Big, for... big uh, congratulations on such a great achievement. I'm very, very proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. I couldn't have done this without you, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for being so humble. But then I think uh, your hard work is. uh something that counts the most we as teachers can just be that lighthouse which can guide you but that you have to walk all the way so thank you i'm i'm really really happy to see that uh, you know um, you've cleared it plus we have students from different parts of the country and yeah. when i see people from different states uh clearing net and you know celebrating in their own way it is very very heartwarming and overwhelming for me thank you ma'am so thank you so much for giving uh, giving us a reason to smile and uh, give us a reason to feel proud about so before we move ahead and i have a bundle of questions that i want to ask you so that uh, a lot of other students who are in this preparation journey can get some guidance from you i would want to first know about you uh, where are you from and what have you done what how was your education like and what motivated you to uh, aspire to become a professor well actually um, when i was in school um, i always enjoyed giving presentations and all that in classes mm-hmm. so i okay. i've always enjoyed teaching i would uh, help out my younger cousins or juniors so and both of my parents are also uh, in the education department so um, our household has always been like uh, around education and my grandfather instilled in me um, a very healthy habit of reading like he used to tell me stories and so i used to read a lot uh so from reading i got the love for literature and from like uh, teaching my juniors and my cousins i got the love for teaching and oh, wow. uh, that's that's so similar to my story i feel so so connected even i have a younger brother so i have always been like a second mother to him so i've always taught him and that is where i i understood that i enjoy teaching so yeah. much so yeah please go ahead yeah and then uh, when i was in 11th um actually i wanted to opt for arts humanities but my grades were so good nobody even asked me what i wanted so just everybody assumed she's going to go for science so that's what i took i think the uh, 11th and 12th standard were the like darkest period of my life because mm-hmm. then at that time i was not enjoying studies since childhood i've always enjoyed studying i was not Uh, a typical studious student like i would score good but it doesn't didn't mean like i would continuously study for hours and all that like you were curious it, you wanted to learn yeah, you had that exactly. uh, thirst for knowledge right yeah so that curiosity was lost when i was in 11th and 12th so 
uh, after uh, school uh, my father said like now you should just go for what you really want um, so then i joined a college in uh, calcutta actually in, uh, under calcutta university bethun college but okay. uh, due to some health issues i had to leave after 6 months i had to quit um, and at that time i thought my life is over because i wasted one year completely mm-hmm. and uh, i came back and after six more months i started uh, i joined another college holy cross college in my city in agartala and then everything was going great like suddenly i, I was i found the spark that i had uh, before it was back again and i was the topper of tripura university uh, in ug as well as in pg so i found the love for literature that i had and while doing my dissertation in masters level i found that interest in research so in masters uh, i decided that i am going to do phd and of course i want to take my love for literature further i want to teach other people mm-hmm. and uh, and for me a teacher's job is not just to teach uh, i want to be a guide to them which i have met a lot of people who have uh, made me the person that i am i just want to be contribute to somebody else's life like that so then uh, i didn't know how to start studying for net like if everything was all over the place there's so much of syllabus there's no limit to the right. syllabus Absolutely. so i i just didn't know what to do but even before i started my masters for my ug sometimes i would check out your youtube videos for like uh, ug classes um and i found them interesting and uh, like the visual uh, representation that was very eye catching and easy to remember so i used to mm-hmm. uh, check out your classes before that online youtube classes so then i found out that you also um, provide coaching for uh, ugc net so uh, i first saw the syllabus and the syllabus made me so happy because nowhere else could i find such a beautifully divided syllabus it is uh, concise compact but it also contains every little thing that is necessary for net mm-hmm. uh, which was nowhere else available and that too it was it was available for free which was like yeah. a jackpot so uh, i also read up on uh, some other people's experience uh, who have studied under you and i saw that uh, um, they have done great in life and i i was actually interested to see what it's like so um, uh, one day i just told my parents that i think i should take this and they are like definitely you go ahead and do it so i started the course and uh, i did attempt uh, uh, net before uh, when i was still doing my masters but um, your syllab- the syllabus you provided was not over i just uh, took some parts uh, so i was mm-hmm. not that confident but when i completed the whole syllabus i was confident that net is go- i'm going to get it i know i'm going to get it the grf was a cherry on top but i knew i was going to get that uh, like i will co- qualify net because of how confident i was i was taking sample papers and everything was going great and i would play your lectures all day in the house and my father <laughs> would walk by and say who's talking to you who's teaching you who's this teacher and i told him that i have taken this course na i told you um, so my father would also sometimes he's also from literature background he would also sometimes sit and listen to you <laughs> so okay. um, that's so then after uh, i was fully prepared i took all of your tests uh, and then i had the confidence oh, right. uh, you attempted the mock tests mock tests yeah quoted. i okay. attempted all the mock tests and i was when i was fully confident then my seat was actually out of the city which was an added oh. stress for me but i went there with my mother and after the test uh, i was confident uh, and i also checked out your videos about cut off discussions and all that and i was i was confident but you know, when i got the result of the grf i was like uh, this was not expected so this is yeah, a huge kind of preparation that you have done since you've completed the entire syllabus see uh, i always uh, tell my students that uh, there are two things first is completing the entire syllabus which is in hmm. itself very very huge because the syllabus that ugc net has given is a very indicative syllabus poetry yeah. drama fiction non fiction you don't know where to draw that line yeah. so the, only when you know the entire syllabus you know that okay this is the ocean that i have to cover and secondly revising all of that and Yeah. ensuring that everything is there in your mind is another <laughs> uh in this another hassle so if you've done both the things together so jrf was definitely meant for you <laughs> and the journey that you've just told me i'm so touched uh, and it kind of uh, took me back to my school days because i had a similar experience i was also a very studious student so uh, when i got good grades in 10th standard 
I decided to opt for commerce. Science was something that I knew that I was never interested in. But then humanities again was something that wasn't considered to be very cool or very um, good in terms of the kind of aura uh, humanities students have. So I took commerce, and then those two years were pathetic. I uh, kind of enjoyed it because I was the head girl of my school, so I had other responsibilities that I yeah. had to like uh, uh, bear on my shoulders. But uh, academically, I never enjoyed the subject, and that is when I decided that like, okay, I'm going to pursue literature for the rest of my life. So yeah. it kind of just uh, feels as if uh, we both have sailed the same boat, and yeah. Uh, It's like really, really nice to hear about your story and the kind of challenges you've been through and the kind of um, journey you've had. So that's that's wonderful. That's amazing. And uh, I I must congratulate uh, your parents as well for uh, for providing you such a beautiful atmosphere at house that uh, they always kind of wanted you to pursue what you loved. At the same time, they always encouraged you to, uh, you know, follow your dreams. That is that is something which not a lot of people are fortunate to have, and uh, I, I should uh, definitely be praising them for uh, this. Um, so I have a bundle of questions uh, for you uh, yes, because please. you've you've done JRF and that too, you know, you've. Uh, scored such great grades so i wanted to understand from you the very first thing is that uh, when you started the entire preparation what were the main uh, focus points where you found that okay this is something that i'm struggling with so uh, was was there any particular portion where you found that okay this i am not confident about or um i think um in the literary theory part mm-hmm. uh, i could understand the theories when i was listening to the lectures and all that i could understand it but what happens is after learning so many theories uh, sometimes it gets jumbled up in your mind like who said right. which one so this right. was a little bit difficult so i tried to do some mind mapping and all that uh, making uh-huh. charts and tables to help me remember that so yeah uh, and in depth reading helps a lot if i keep reading about it continuously then um, it is easy to remember like uh, um it is uh, more easy like it, on on the tip of the tongue it comes like uh, there is a difference it, it it's just becomes yeah. that simple right. so yeah and right right questions uh, in in the like ugc net questions uh, i would say that the questions are uh, usually very surface level but this time i believe the questions from literary theory were deeper if somebody didn't have proper understanding of the theories they wouldn't have been able to answer because they were not as factual like who said this who said that no it was a little right. bit deeper so right they they kind of changed the trend they have made the paper yeah. more analytical uh, more critical uh, because they they just don't want you to mug up information they want you to um, you know uh, know the basics so that you can connect those dots and come up with the yeah. right answer so i think yeah and how did you balance your preparation for paper 1 and paper 2 uh since i'm from science background so that helped me a little bit with paper 1 the maths thing was easy i basically concentrated on the maths part mostly and other than that mm-hmm. the teaching aptitude and all that uh research methodology research methodology i think it is easier than the other things uh but the teaching part and all that uh i kept that as secondary first i mainly focused on paper 2 and and the mathematics portion of paper 1 got it and later like uh, before like a month before the exam i started with the other parts of the paper 1 so my main right. focus was paper 2 paper 2 and which according to you is like more important paper 1 or paper 2 i think uh, paper 1 uh, in paper 1 there is a huge opportunity to score if you can uh, score if you can do the maths correctly in paper 1 then the rest is smooth sailing but of course uh, you need to have a good grasp on british literature for the paper 2 part mm-hmm. that that is for sure because fifty percent paper is directly from yeah. uh, and from was that your part. first attempt? No, this was my second attempt actually. Second. Uh, I uh, attempted when I was still in masters, but those were like I just wanted to see what it's like for that. Right, right. And how how was it different for you in both these attempts? Like. Uh, did you observe any notable differences between the definitely, two? Definitely, because when when I first sat for the exam, I did not go through the whole syllabus. I was still mm-hmm. in the 
british literature part maybe in the age of enlightenment or something so mm, mm. i knew a lot of things from bachelor's days and from my masters but i have forgotten it i needed to refresh it all so mm. this course helped me a lot but when i sat for the second attempt the difference was a uh, huge because this time i was even before going i was confident that i can do this yeah so, right right that, that, is, that is so wonderful and what uh, like what study material or resources did you use for paper 2 preparation like was it just our course or did you also refer to anything okay. else i was completely dependent on your course only okay. any extra reading which i did uh, i read some texts and okay. i made my own material myself like uh, charts and all that i did uh, that's all that's all great great and uh, was there any portion that um, you you left because of time constraint uh whatever i left even for time constraint i kind of read up on that by myself in like uh, short so okay. everything i touched okay. up on everything i'm sure i touched okay. up on everything okay. that is that is wonderful because uh, all those one or two questions that come from like even uh, lesser important units mm-hmm. like english in india they also count when it comes to that uh, race of grf yes. because grf yes. mein to each and every mark ka Yeah. So that is interesting that uh, you did not miss out on anything, all mm-hmm. the topics, because a lot of topics are not uh, mentioned in the UGC net syllabus. Yes. Yet they are asked in the paper. So a lot mm-hmm. of students are like, "Okay, why do we need to read this? Because it is not there in the uh, syllabus." Uh, right and uh, like were there any specific uh, topics that um, you know you you really found interesting and in which you wanted to like read more and more upon which were your favorite authors or topics um i think my favorite uh, part was the european literature part uh, i have a love for classical literature oh, so wow. uh, the lectures on like uh, first you gave some introductory lectures on greek mythology and all that right. which i really so yeah that is i think my favorite part oh that's wonderful i am so glad that there's somebody who uh, who have uh, actually uh, enjoyed those lectures because a lot of students they kind of miss out on it because they feel that okay it's the question i got but that is the base of literature exactly. you cannot understand po por keats ka greek references unless and until you don't know about the greek history or else it would just be about mugging up information yeah even today even today these are relevant in literature like in percy jackson it starts from there only so if yeah. somebody is not clear be- on the basics they can't go move ahead move ahead absolutely absolutely and um, like after reviewing the paper 2 syllabus that is prescribed by ugc net low so when you started your preparation you must have seen that syllabus so what was your first step after seeing that syllabus which one the pres- the one prescribed by ugc ugc yes <laughs> the, that was uh, that made me panic actually because uh-huh. i couldn't understand where to begin and where to end like where everything goes uh, even when i started my masters i could see that in masters uh, the syllabus is uh, there are only uh, sections parts from the main syllabus the whole mm. syllabus the whole english literature is huge like how am mm-hmm. i going to cover that that much area is it possible right. i couldn't even find a sequence if i start studying genre wise if i start studying mm. novels it doesn't make sense like that uh, i think the best way to study is chronologic the chronological method so your mm. syllabus was very much helpful in that uh, section area because it was completely in, in, a, in a chronological method and not just the syllabus right. even even inside the modules the authors you discuss all mm. are in a chronological order even their works are in chronological order so that helped me a lot in chronology questions basically that that's wonderful that was the entire idea because i when i was preparing for net even i found that a lot of chronological questions are asked and there's no way that you can remember so many dates so yeah. the only way you can recall is by learning everything chronologically so that it is it is kind of uh, uh, you know imprinted in your brain like that yes. you know that okay this work is before and this is after this right right that's great talking about our masters syllabus that you were talking about so do you believe that since you've done graduation masters and you've been a fantastic student uh, in both these uh, courses do you believe that uh, even a fresher who didn't study uh, well in bachelors or masters can clear ugc net uh, provided that he just goes through the syllabus that is there in bachelors and masters 
uh i think just the syllabus of bachelor's and masters is definitely not enough because outside of that there are many things that come in the exam mm-hmm. uh but uh being a fresher uh if they study uh if they actually i'm i'm going to repeat it every time i say this if they go through your syllabus that is going to be actually helpful because that has everything everything that we have studied in bachelor's masters plus everything that is required for net so i think uh, it is the best way to approach even for mm. a fresher so yeah 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 uh, so because uh, this is one question that i frequently get from students Uh, because there's this myth in the uh, UGC net market that UGC net में तो whatever you've studied in your bachelor's and masters that is going to come. So a lot of people think कि अच्छा ठीक है हम bachelor's and masters के notes revise कर लेते हैं and we'll be good to go. And that is a mistake because uh, even after mm-hmm. going through those notes, when you see the paper, you're like मेरे को दो questions से ज़्यादा नहीं आता. And that mm-hmm. is what happened with me as well. Like I was a gold medalist, and still when I saw the paper, I'm like इतना गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट होने का क्या मतलब है आई आई डोंट नो लॉट ऑफ राइटर्स यस सो या सो दैट्स दैट्स व्हाट Right, right. Of course, of course. And how did you structure your daily routine while you were preparing for UGC net? So how was so, your day like? A lot of people think that since I have cracked JRF, I must have been studying like for hours and hours. It's not <laughs> like that because I have never been that kind of student who can continuously <laughs> study. Um, what my routine was like uh, before one year before I sat for the exam, uh, I was still in the university, so I was doing my classes. Uh, mm-hmm. And in between classes, when I had time, I would just put uh, put in my earphones and listen to your lectures and mm-hmm. take some notes. and then when i came back before sleeping i would just go through those notes and i would also uh, of course uh, work on the things that have been taught in the university so i was doing it simultaneously then university was over i had a few months before the exam when i was completely free mm-hmm. so uh, during those days uh, at during the day time i would just listen to the lectures and in the evening i would uh, go through them again and and at night sometimes i would study a little uh, late at night at night i would do some maths and all that so this is how mm-hmm. i managed and there's a misconception i think uh, among students that net requires a lot of uh, memory power so mm-hmm. i i am i have a horrible memory <laughs> if it was completely <laughs> memory based i don't think i would have been able to crack jrf at all um, mm-hmm. i think it's not just memory you have to understand things if you mm-hmm. attempt to just memorize you will never be able to memorize so mm-hmm. if you try mm-hmm. understanding things like Then how you don't have to you, memorize actually yeah you don't yeah. have to memorize if you listen especially if you're listening to audio lectures it is very helpful uh, mm-hmm. and uh, also if you're listening to audio lectures or video lectures uh, or you are doing something like making a chart or something mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. mind mapping mm-hmm. yourself then i think it automatically just uh, retain your brain automatically retains the information so that was true, my approach true. that that is fantastic because what you've said uh, makes so much sense that um, net is more about understanding it is just like when we watch a movie we understand it we don't mug up information mm-hmm. and that is the reason why we remember movies for so long like i i remember uh, watching a movie 10 15 years back chalte chalte there was shahrukh khan and rani mukherjee mm-hmm. ka movie and i still remember the entire movie ka story even though i have not watched it again why because yes. i understood the plot i did not mug up information so that that makes so much sense wonderful wonderful i think this is going to be very very helpful for students to understand this uh, yeah. basic myth that is there that you have to mug up everything that doesn't help never uh, i was asking that throughout this net preparation ka journey uh, there must have been moments where you would have felt distracted social media friends ka party hua ye wo so how did you overcome that and stick to the preparation um i some sacrifices definitely have to be made if you want something if you desire something but the best thing is that i have a love for literature which is why i did not i never felt like it was a burden i was enjoying the journey 
so mm-hmm. yes i had to cancel a lot of plans sometimes but i was not completely like uh, stuck inside my room studying because that was i think that would be disastrous for me because all work mm-hmm. and no play i can't handle that so i also right. need breaks so sometimes i went out with friends sometimes i went out alone um, so i needed time to relax but uh, i think the love for literature gave me the motivation to stay focused to so, stay focused right which is why you and should always that is what the for- rule Uh, yeah sorry no, no. please go ahead uh, i was saying which is why you should always opt for what you love <laughs> it's true true absolutely like i think um, if anybody would have uh, to ask me that what is one message that i want to give to everyone out there in india all the kids i think i would say that just pursue a career that you love and you yeah. never have to work for a single day it is such a joyous experience to like do what you love that you feel motivated to work on a monday you don't feel like okay i need a, a saturday and sunday ka break to just wind down so yes absolutely but then uh, one thing that um, you know kind of um, i would want to add on to what you just say said is that this is the philosophy which even in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of nutritionist would suggest like the this dieting ka jo pura setup hai हेल्थी कैसे रहना है उसके बारे में जितनी भी चीजें बोली जाती है मार्केट में और लॉट ऑफ पीपल नाउ डेज दे रेजोनेट विद दिस फिलोसफी दैट एट्टी परसेंट यू हैव टू हीट क्लीन ट्वेंटी परसेंट यू कैन ईट जंक यू कैन हैव मील आउट साइड यू कैन एंजॉय दैट सो दैट एट्टी ट्वेंटी का बैलेंस इज इम्पोर्टेंट वॉट यू जिस सेट एट्टी परसेंट टाइम फोकस ट्वेंटी परसेंट डिस्ट्रेक्शन तो जरूरी है ना यू डोंट हैव टू कंप्लीटली से नो टू एवरी एनी थिंग it is just that you should know that how much time your instagram is taken and how much time you're focusing it should not be like okay you're on instagram for 6 hours and you're just studying for 1 hour it should be the other way around that okay yeah. let me study for 6 hours half an hour 1 hour if i want to like just scroll through instagram that is still fine so yeah that's that's wonderful so one thing uh, that a lot of students ask me is that they face a lot of challenge in making notes and since you said that you made notes and revised it i want to understand from you how was your note making strategy like so uh, for me uh, note making uh, i definitely like to draw a lot uh, in my notes like charts and all that diagrams mm-hmm. that helps me a lot uh, like if i start listening to a lecture and uh, writing every single sentence that is not going to work for me um, i can uh, for example if i have to uh, show the uh, meaning of a word the etymology then i'll draw mm-hmm. it out and uh, show how it has come or right. for example if i'm trying to understand the plot of a play then i would make uh, family trees and all that for to make it easy to understand and also um, some people say that uh, uh, using colors and all that on your notes is just an extra effort you shouldn't waste time on it but that helps me to remember things to visualize like when i am right. sitting in the exam if i see a word i can sometimes remember that i remember exactly on which area of the page i have area written that the word. page and which color have you highlighted yeah, it with exactly right. so right. i think right. uh, you should always uh, be taking notes in a way that it is easier to visualize so visualize that is Plus, i think you have a very similar memory like me we both have pictographic memory so anything mm-hmm. that we see uh, mm-hmm. kinds of uh, has a very deep imprint in our brain so for us it really helps if we have colors if we have sticky notes of different colors mm-hmm. highlighters and stuff like that that is that is wonderful uh, at the same time i wanted to also confirm that were you there when um, were you part of the course when we were uploading these video lectures that we have started uh, where uh, we had those like are, those di- diagrammatic presentations those are like very recent i think by yeah, that time yeah. i was al- already done with the syllabus <laughs> okay you were done with the yeah. syllabus because those are the lectures where uh, we have uploaded a couple of them on youtube as well uh, so those are the lectures where we have actually made story boards yes so yes the diagrams that you're talking about the entire story is narrated in a diagrammatic way so, i saw i saw yeah so i think uh, that that uh, is really helpful for anybody who is not so creative to like create their own story boards mm-hmm. so then they can just you know look at that story board and kind of replicate the same that is great and how how many mock tests did you attempt before the exam all of them oh, how many were there i don't remember i think it was uh, i don't remember i have just given all of them like 100% completed that's what i oh. remember oh wow <laughs> so we had like 47 full length mock tests 
Yes. And yeah, uh, you did twice walk test. You gave all of them. Oh, all of them. Wonderful. I used to and do what, them every night. Wow, wow. <laughs> that's that's amazing. And what role did these mock tests play in your preparation? What do you think? uh those helped me i in identifying the areas of concern actually where i was going wrong i could find out mm. and then i could focus on those parts in the last month i was only focusing on paper 1 and the areas that were like i could not retain in paper 2 so that helped me a lot in finding out where i should concentrate in paper 2 mm. for the last month so that was helpful okay oh okay that's that's wonderful because uh, most of the students what they do is they give the mock test and then they just feel bad or feel good with the score that okay if they scored less then they are like depressed if they scored high marks then they are happy but then the they don't uh, understand the aim of giving the mock test it is to understand your weak areas so that you can work on them and you can make them into your strengths so you you identified it really well and i'm, I'm so glad that uh, everything that you did was so proper that jrf uh, uh, <laughs> you made it possible in like your first actual attempt where you sincerely prepared for it that's wonderful and could you also explain um, uh, your revision strategy like whether you opted for a daily revision or was it a last minute revision before the exam how did you revise uh, in the last month as i said uh, i was focusing on maths and the areas of concern uh, mm-hmm. like maybe about 2 weeks before the exam started uh, i started going through my notes which i had taken listening to the lectures i would go right. through the notes and uh, that would help me also in figuring out what i'm not remembering if there is something that i'm not remembering i made separate notes for that and in the last moment i had plans to study till the last day but since my exam center was out of the city i was yeah. very nervous because i could not revise the last day i was traveling so yeah. um, somehow i i managed to just go through whatever i could not remember at the like at the end of the um, uh, like when it was like one day before the exams i thought that there is no point in going back and revising history of english mm. literature because i know i have like completely, uh, completely memorized it properly mm-hmm. and i don't need to go back there so i only focused on what i could not remember so uh, there is this thing my mother says that if there is something that you have studied even once you have went through it you mm-hmm. will remember it when you will need it so which is why i completed mm-hmm. the entire syllabus so that if i just read it once i know when i see the question i am going to remember it so that mm-hmm. was my strategy that's that's wonderful that's wonderful and uh... or uh, what your mother says uh, is so uh, so true because if we go back to psychology and we talk about this concept of subconscious mind so anything that you see even if yeah. it just passes your sight it yeah. is there it is stored in your mm-hmm. database and whenever you want to retrieve it just like that computer uh, ka aap kuch bhi folder ko google karke you can just retrieve the information similarly your brain can retrieve it it's so powerful so that's that's wonderful and uh, one thing i wanted to understand from you that can a student who is covered like 100% of the syllabus just like you've covered everything can that person answer all the questions in ugc net english exam paper or do you think that um, there are is there is a proba- probability of some unknown questions which he will fail to answer what do you that- think about this that unknown co- probability of an unknown question is always going to be there because literature itself is limitless there is no limit mm. you don't know where mm. it is going to come from moreover sometimes you just see all such questions to filter out students which is right. um, acceptable truth i understand why they do that uh, so yes luck also plays like a tiny bit of role in this so uh, if somebody has completed the syllabus and still they didn't succeed in an attempt i don't think there is anything to be disheartened because the more you attempt you also gain ex- experience you understand how to deal with the questions that you don't know the answer to how don't to eliminate because, yeah i i would just want to add something to it what you said is so uh, true that you just see wants to filter out and at the same time they also want to uh analyze a lot of other qualities your time hmm. management skills your confidence yes. all of that is also tested so maybe you are academically brilliant but when you see an unknown question or an unfamiliar question and you just you know feel like giving up on the paper and you you just feel palpitations in your hmm. body that is something that you have to work on because yes. 10 15% i am 100% sure like what was your percentage like what were your marks in paper 1 paper 2 this time 
I in total I got two hundred eight, which is like sixty nine point three percent. Three percent, right? Yeah. And I can very well say that somebody, uh, after knowing you more through this interview, somebody uh, who has done so much efforts like you have done with intense revision with consistency. If that person is scoring seventy percent. that means the paper is designed in a way that somebody who is excellent can not score more than 80% yeah because then otherwise anybody would have scored 95 97% and mm-hmm. never in my like in my 6 years of teaching experience or even before uh, i've never heard anybody scoring 97% nobody even not a, even a teacher who has been teaching english mm-hmm. literature can score 97% and that is because the paper is designed in a way that you can only know 70 to 80% of the paper yes. so it's a big myth that okay if i am uh, if i have completed the syllabus i've revised it i have to know all the 100 questions because then if you don't go with that reality in mind ki 80% hi aayega itna padhne ke baad bhi so you get disheartened even in the mocks so yeah that's the thing that's that's true um, and what about like what are um, i i I don't know how to phrase it, but then, like, do you have some uh, tips that you want to give to students who will be sitting in the next attempt, next attempt, uh, for managing time effectively in the exam hall? Because, like, a lot of people feel that yeah. our paper is not done in time. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. what do you have to say about that? I think for that, uh, the students need to find out the wh- which part they feel they are strong in and which is mm-hmm. their weak part. If you start with what you are strong in, if you start, for example, somebody is more comfortable with paper two than paper one. If you start with mm-hmm. paper two, then you will have that confidence. You will retain that confidence when you move on right, to paper right. one. If so you start true. with right. paper one and, and your confidence breaks, then you will just uh, be demotivated. Yeah. So. so even for myself when i sat for the exams in paper 1 this time the maths was a little bit difficult for me so right. at first i i spent like uh, 10 minutes on uh, two questions and then i was like no this is not going to work so i moved on to the next paper and i Thank finished you. that and then i could work on the first paper because it became easier for me so at first okay. i think uh, they should uh, shuffle through the question just sh- shuffle and some questions you will be able to do it by just reading once so finish mm-hmm. those things and then just skip through the ones that you find difficult and uh, do the easy parts and come to the difficult ones last that's that's the simple way. absolutely true i think this is something that i have been telling students and uh, you you uh, kind of summarized it very very beautifully <laughs> that doing something that you are confident on will kind of give you that boost that you need to mm-hmm. survive those 3 hours because there's no way you can survive a 3 hour paper with first attempting 10 questions which you get wrong because then your confidence breaks so yeah. you you don't have the energy nor you have that um, that kind of critical thinking that you need yeah. to know ki in charon mein se kaun sa eliminate karke mujhe answer tak pahunchna hai so very true and i want to know your thoughts about the difficulty level of this time's ugc net paper like did you find it easy moderately challenging or difficult what was it um i think paper 1 was slightly difficult than i expected uh, mm-hmm. the maths part was difficult for me personally um and in paper 2 there was a lot of critical thinking it was not simply memory based it was it required you to think so i enjoyed paper 2 and i thought it was uh, it was like medium to uh, difficult i think this is what the level should be i enjoyed doing it right yeah. right that's that's true so any last uh, lastly i would want to ask like any valuable life lessons that you want uh, to share with us did you, which you learned during uh, this preparation journey um yeah i would like to definitely tell the future aspirants and students who want to pursue this uh, path is that there are going to be moments when you feel like giving up but just don't because it's all going to work out in the end all your efforts pay off i i think if you really want something from the bottom of your heart it will come to you if you deserve it it will come to you so just True. don't give up and True. of course don't forget to enjoy it that's all. right right uh, enjoying the process i think is the most critical thing yeah. um because wo jo success ki khushi hai wo to bahut chote se time ki hoti hai yeah journey mein jitna samay lagta hai 
वो बहुत वो बहुत लंबा समय होता है और वो अगर आपने अच्छे से इंजॉय करना सीख लिया सो योर लाइफ इन टर्न बिकम्स ब्यूटिफुल एंड दैट इज समथिंग आई स्ट्रॉन्गली बिलीव शुड बी एडेड इन ऑल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ लाइफ नॉट जस्ट योर बट एनी वेयर लाइक नॉट जस्ट इन करियर बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अचीव एनी थिंग इन लाइफ सो द जर्नी ऑफ getting to that thing is mm-hmm. way difficult way more long and way more difficult and if you learn to enjoy that process then it is uh, beautiful and it is very very uh, memorable also so to say because i am i'm pretty sure that this ugc net preparation journey would right now be one of the most memorable experiences Definitely. you've ever had yeah. yeah so that is what counts at the end of the day yes wonderful it was really really amazing uh, talking to you uh, and you. i i would really want to know from you if you have any plans to come down to jaipur uh, ever to visit rajasthan uh, do you have uh, right any plans now, as of now no but uh, i would definitely like to <laughs> i would let you please, know please. it's a beautiful city and i would love to have you here and we would love to celebrate this day with you when you come here uh my entire office they are very very happy especially uh, i don't know you might have spoken to my teammates uh, a few times here and there yeah. um so they have this very special um you know place for you uh, you in their heart so they were very excited today when they were scheduling this interview that okay uh, you'll get to meet one of our favorite uh, kids from the <laughs> course <laughs> maybe because they've seen the leaderboard they would have seen your performance report so we kind of keep on analyzing that which student is where in terms of the performance table so we all had very high hopes from you and you kind of uh, uh made all of us proud so thank you thank so you much so and thank, thank you. you so much for being a part of arpatakarwa.com we are we are extremely happy i i cannot just use the uh the kind of excitement that i have in my <laughs> heart in words i cannot uh, put that in my words but then we are very very happy to have students like you who are so passionate about literature because see clearing net is one part of the yes. thing but then what i really want from the depth of my heart is to have students on board with us who want to become great teachers and who are enthusiastic and passionate about literature because we want to spread this across india that we have wonderful teachers so that they can create wonderful students in future and i'm very happy and very very glad that we have you on uh, board with us thank, thank you, you so, so much for choosing us here and thank, thank you. you so much for uh, taking out time for this interview Uh, no, the kind of experiences you have shared i think it's going to be extremely helpful for anybody who uh, aspires to clear jrf because uh, i i kind of felt as if um, you know all those things that i used to jot down before uh, coming live on youtube or before making a ppt for youtube where i want to share my experiences that revision ko importance to mock test solve karo ye all of that you've kind of summarized in this interview <laughs> so everything that you've spoken is exactly what i think in my head and coming from a person who has done jrf and recently cleared the paper so a lot of people are going to resonate with what you think and are going to follow and follow your footsteps thank Great. you Thank you so much congratulations once again and give my warm regards to your parents yeah definitely have a nice day thank you same to you bye bye bye